Uh, how you guys doing? This is Manuel from Old School Metal Vinyl and welcome back to my channel. So in this third episode we're gonna take a look at one of the ultimate holy grace metal vinyl collecting. It's a record whose original press has become hellishly rare to find and currently sells for insane amounts of money. And of course I'm talking about uh, the legendary Death Crush Mini Helpy by Mayhem from Norway. So first of all let me say that of course there are countless different editions of this one album available on the market. Some are official, some not so official. Uh, it, it, it of course was reissued several times in the last years since the demand for it is obviously still very high. Uh, I will focus on the two versions which in my opinion are the best ones in terms of sound and presentation. The one currently in my hands uh, is the very first press of Death Crush. Uh, it was released in 1987 on Poser Coast Music, which was actually Mayhem's own label, so this is basically self-release. It's limited to a thousand copy, and as I said before, this is by far one of the most sold after metal LPs. Collectors will pay big money to secure a copy and trust me even like that. It's still not easy to be found at all So uh, a few more a few interesting aspects about this press um, Probably this may be all news for those of you who are active in the vinyl trading community uh, the back side of the cover uh, suffer from a major production fuck up as a matter of fact, the press implant, which was in charge of things, uh, uh, somehow forgot to print the name of uh, guitarist Euronymous uh, below his picture. So he had to do it himself, manually, uh, handwriting it, which uh, actually must have been one heck of a job, considering that he, he also had to write by hand the number of each single unit. You can see each, each copy is hand numbered. My own one is uh, 546 out of a thousand. And uh, I guess this is uh, what makes this edition so special and unique. Uh, not just its musical value, but also the fact that this is basically uh, a piece of metal history which came directly from Euronymous hands. Uh, and of course, as a such, it holds a special meaning to the true diehard fans of the band, as we all know how important this guy was for the underground metal scene worldwide. Oh, two different sheets are included in uh, this one. Uh, I will show you right now. Here's the first one and here's the second one. Well, um, the first one, uh, bear in mind, um, of course this was meant to be a promotional item back in the day. The band was not that popular as it is today. So they included uh, a short biography of the band at that point in time which exists actually in different colors. Uh, the one I'm having in my hands right now was uh, printed on uh, light blue paper, as you can see. But I seen at least two more printed on green and yellow paper. Uh, I'm not 100% uh, sure if other colors exist or not. Uh, really can, can be sure, to be perfectly honest with you. If you have more uh, accurate info, just feel free to share it. Uh, so far I've seen three, uh, the one in, on blue, uh, the other one on uh, yellow and the third one on green paper and that's about it. Um, and this is, yeah, the, the, this is the first uh, insert that comes with the LP. The second one, it's uh, this, uh, it's basically a coupon, you know, this, this yellow uh, piece of paper you see right now is a coupon. Uh, to obtain the lyrics of the album, um, which for some reason were not included in the LP. The idea was that you are supposed to cut it out, you can see that there are sheets of signs here, uh, and send it back uh, to the band's address uh, and get the lyrics from them via snail mail. My personal guess is that not, not so many people actually bother to do that since almost all the copies I saw throughout the years uh, uh, still included the coupon. So perhaps it was not such a successful idea, who knows really. So as I said, um, this is an extremely rare record. Uh, I don't need to tell you uh, that 1000 copies uh, back in 1987 were sold out uh, quite uh, quickly. So nowadays it has become pretty uh, impossible to find. There's virtually zero chance to find it for a reasonable price. Uh, it usually goes anywhere from a thousand bucks and even more depending on its conditions. 
I remember that back in the mid 90s, a dear mate of mine somehow managed to find a copy at a local vinyl fair selling for as cheap as $9, believe it or not. But for some extremely stupid reason, he passed on it. So, I mean, there's like a chance in a lifetime. Uh, trust me, uh, that is not gonna happen nowadays. Uh, there's absolutely zero chance that you're gonna find a copy of Death Crush at the local flea market. Uh, so if you want this one, uh, be prepared to, f to to pay big money for it. Uh, this one copy was actually bought back in 1995 uh, of a Swedish guy um, who used to sing for the band Midwinter, if memory serves me well. And in cases, uh, for any re for any chance, um, actually looking at this video, thank you so much because uh, I was really after this record. And he really helped me out with it, with this one, and it was such a huge acquisition for me back in the day. So as you can see, it's still in good hands, uh, and uh, it will stay like that for at least a few more years. Uh, it's not coming in the grave with me, so I guess that sooner or later I will have to get rid of it. But at the moment, it's staying where it is. Um, I think I paid it like a uh, hundred bucks uh, back in the day, uh, plus a couple of Venom records, if uh, if I remember correctly, not 100% positive about it, but uh, in perspective that was definitely a bargain, because nowadays uh, 1,000 euro, uh, 1,000 dollars is like uh, the average price it usually sells for, don't expect to find it for cheap. Uh, if I have to believe auction sites, the most expensive copy ever sold went for over $3,000, which is totally insane if you ask me. Then again, you never know, uh, they used to say that things are only worth as much as you're willing to pay for them. I guess there is some truth to that statement. But the question that most people ask is uh, how you tell an original from the countless ratios. Well, I gotta tell you, uh, the thing with Death Crush is that uh, just like with every other expensive record on the market, it was bought like several times. I gotta say, some of those fake unofficial editions are very, very close to the real deal. So uh, be very careful. You don't wanna spend a thousand bucks and end up with a bootleg. So before forking out big money, try to get as much info as possible on the seller his reputation, the feedback he got, and where did he get the LP from. For instance, I noticed that the bootleg versions are quite common on eBay. Um, so if possible, try to acquire it from reliable sellers. The best way, of course, is to buy it off people who are, or at least were in direct con contact with the band. Like for instance, uh, the Nessa Blood shop from Norway is definitely one of those. Now, I don't want to sound like I'm out advertising them or doing promotion for them or anything like that, but that's a safe place where you can find an original copy and be sure it's 100% genuine. As a rule of thumb, bear in mind the following. Uh, the original press comes on black vinyl, so whatever other color you're seeing out there, whether it's blue, golden, green, it's definitely not the very first press, no matter what the seller may say. Both the sheets I showed you must be included, and if you have the chance to, I strongly recommend you to check the matrix of the record. By that meaning, I'm not sure if you can tell it uh, from the camera angle, um, the engraving, which are the, the writings which are engraved just uh, under the central label of the LP. You need to compare these writings uh, with an original copy, at least one that you're 100% sure it's an original one. And that's definitely uh, the safest way of telling if you're buying an original. Uh, otherwise, I really wouldn't spend that much money on something that I'm not 1000% that uh, it's an original copy. So that's enough for the very first press. Uh, the very first repress of Death Crush came out six years later uh, in 1993 on Euronymous' very own Death Like Silence production label. And though while still being pretty expensive, it can be a solid alternative in case you can't afford an original Poser Corps press. Visually, I gotta say, it looks just as great as every DSP vinyl release. Uh, that means a thick, glossy cover. The inside of the cover is black, as you can tell, uh, which nowadays is a pretty common thing to find in these kind of releases. 
but back then uh, it used to be very unusual, extremely cool and special in my opinion. Uh, you get a very heavy vinyl, uh, very very good sound quality, uh, definitely an awesome edition. By far the best uh, version of the album, if we're not counting the original. Layout-wise, uh, as you can see, it's it's a bit different if compared to the to the first press. I mean, the cover uh, is not pink anymore; it's red, as you can tell. Um. I would say uh, it generally has a more serious, perhaps less, slightly less underground feel to it. It definitely looks like a more professional release under all points of view. Uh, jacket, as you can say, as you can see, is printed this time. It's not just plain white, just uh, like in the previous version. Uh, the back cover is quite close to the original. I mean, the colors are of course slightly changed, but. Nothing really major, uh, as you can see my copy was signed by uh, Maniac. Um, generally speaking, I gotta say, anyway, this is a, a very, very nice looking ratio. The, the, the thing with it is that, unfortunately, is, uh, as I said before, it's not cheap at all. Um, you'll need to spend from, I would say, 200 to 300 euro, more or less, to buy one. Uh, which I understand is a, quite a lot of money, uh, but then again, it's still considerably cheaper than the first press. So if you're really uh, into the band and want to make yourself a nice birthday gift or whatever, this is definitely the way to go. I really recommend this press. It's uh, awesome and just gorgeous looking. So these are basically the, the best two versions of Death Crush uh, available. As I said before, there are way many, there are way more uh, to suggest about every ink and break it. Of course, you decide for yourself which one is the most appealing for you. As usual, music, music comes first, but of course, this is a historical album, a milestone of the genre, of the genre. So if you can afford it, just go for it. One more record just just can miss in every metal collection. So guys, I guess this was it for this episode. Till the next one, keep it loud and heavy.